Welcome to the Decoding Interpreting video series presented by Buslingo. In this series, we explore the nuances of the interpreting industry and provide valuable insights for language service companies and professionals seeking to deepen their understanding of interpreting services. Hello guys, today uh, we are going to be explaining operations and interpreter pipeline management. Uh, my name is Guillermo, I'm the director of language operations at Buslingo. And we have with us today Divine. And in terms of my position at Buslingo, I've been with Buslingo for almost three years and I manage everything related to vendor management relations, also trade negotiations with our vendors and capacity planning. And over to you, Divine, for the intro. Thank you, G. So, hi everyone. This is Divine. I'm a scheduling coordinator here at Buslingo. I've been with Buslingo for more than two years. Uh, I usually am um, assigned to translations and pre-scheduling interpreters. Thank you. Thank you so much for the introduction, Divine. Uh, we are going to proceed with our agenda and explain you what we have for you all today. Uh, we are going to be uh, describing the different bullet points that you see on your screen. Uh, the first one is going to be addressed by Divine, the supply chain phases or the vendor management phases. Uh, then I'm going to be digging deeper on the operational side of the things. And finally, we are going to be describing the opportunities and challenges. And now uh, I'm going to send it over to Divine. She's going to be digging deeper on the supply chain phases. Thank you. Okay. So we are going to start the presentation by running through our general pipeline process here at Booslingo and then sharing out lessons that are valuable to everyone. So at Booslingo, we have an interpreter pipeline supplied through our partner LSPs that we call the Booslingo Hub or B-Hub. So for the supply chain phases, uh, the first phase is the B-Hub sourcing, and then we have the recruitment, and lastly, the compliance check and activation. Okay, so first phase, the BHUB sourcing. So it's the key phase of our supply management. Based on the data that we collect, our team language access department creates the requirements that we need from our BHUB partners. And then the second one is the recruitment. So once qualified interpreters are selected, our BHUB partners will start collecting the documents needed for the interpreters to pass our compliance check. And then lastly, the compliance and activation. So this is when our BHUB partners submit uh, the interpreter documents for review with our compliance department. And then once cleared, the interpreter is activated in our platform. So much, Divine. And uh, now we're going to be moving into the operational aspect, uh, how we manage capacity planning. Capacity planning is something not easy to manage uh, on the interpreting, remote interpreting industry since the volume is extremely volatile. And then how we negotiate with our vendors or with our big partners and how we retain the good interpreters with us, which is our uh, ultimate goal, right? So from a capacity planning standpoint, uh, we have different approaches. The most common approach that we use is the proactive approach of reviewing the sales pipeline for prospective clients as well as current clients. Based on that language breakdown, based on those total minutes, we start creating what we call the heat maps. And you can see on the screen, the first screenshot that you see on the screen, it's an example of a heat map. You have on the left, the different languages, and then at the top row, you're gonna be having the different time zones of the day. And then the, the heated uh, cells are going to be the total minutes for those languages within that specific time frame of the day. This way, we can relay this information uh, or this hit back to our VHA partners and they can make informed decisions in terms of recruitment. They can allocate interpreters to these time frames and for those specific languages. Then we have other approaches that uh, we are definitely developing right now and they are going to play a uh, large impact uh, or a big role in the future, and it's going to be the Notification Spikes Framework. The Notification Spikes Framework, it's a little bit more of a proactive technology approach uh, to dealing with the 
spikes. One of the most difficult things to control with incoming are the spikes. The spikes, most of the times, they are uh, not expected. And it's very difficult for any interpreter or from a vendor management perspective to actually react to those in time, unless they have information in advance. Uh, in, in this screenshot that you see below the heat map, you're going to be seeing uh, one of the notifications that is triggered by the notification framework to our partners and directly to the interpreters so that they can actually see uh, whether there is uh, a spike going on for that specific or the language that is relevant to them. That way they can quickly connect to the system and we can react to that spike uh, faster and of course, we can increase the language access uh, by reducing the fulfillment rates and improving the, the customer experience. Then the second bullet point, and it's extremely important, uh, it's going to be the trade negotiation. The trade negotiation is such a difficult thing within this industry because first and foremost, uh, you need to uh, do research about the different uh, market rates. Uh, the market rates in this industry, they are very volatile as well. They are constantly changing because there are tons of LSPs that uh, are trying to recruit the interpreters. So they are pretty much offering higher or lower rates, but with more incentives in some cases. So it's very difficult to actually uh, discover what the market rates are. And this involves extensive research. And then also the geopolitical trendings, the rates, they are extremely affected by the geopolitical trendings uh, that sometimes they are unexpected. Uh, a quick example of this would be uh, you have like a war in a specific country and you have a wave or an influx of refugees within the receiving country. And at that point, it's going to be a large need uh, of interpreting services and a shortage of interpreters. Consequently, the interpreters that are able to actually provide language access, they are going to be much more expensive because there are going to be very few interpreters for the amount of volume of in or interpreting minutes needed for that specific language. And at the end of the day, of course, this is going to be affecting market rates. Finally, um, we pay a lot of importance uh, to our competitor rates. Uh, the competitor rates, they are constantly changing. And as I mentioned at the beginning, there are tons of LSPs that they are constantly trying to recruit interpreters since in general within the industry, there is a shortage of qualified interpreters. So they are becoming more and more difficult to recruit each time, right? And then finally, and it's interconnected with the rate negotiation, it's going to be the retention. Uh, we can negotiate the rate, but if once the interpreter is active in our system, we don't have a strategies to retain the interpreter, we have been wasting time during the recruiting process and during the negotiation process, right? So in terms of retention, we do uh, two, uh, we do several strategies, but summarizing the two more important strategies are going to be the living wage calculations and research. Uh, we don't want to offer the minimum wage, we want to offer a living wage to the interpreters, a living wage that they can feel comfortable living out of that kind of wage. Uh, that way, they are going to be happy coming to work, they are going to be happy connecting to the platform, and the likelihood of them staying with us is going to increase. And this takes a lot of research. The living wage, uh, one of the complexities is that it's completely different across continents, countries, and even within countries, such as, for example, the US, it's completely different between cities. Uh, so, for example, if you have uh, an interpreter that is living in California, the living wage is going to be much higher than an interpreter that is living in South Dakota, uh, right? So that involves a lot of research and it has a lot of complexity at the same time. And another thing that we, uh, we use and it's very successful, it's going to be the volume threshold for committed interpreters to ensure income and increase income, uh, just to clarify, we want to reward those interpreters that are committed with us. Uh, we want them to take more volume. And of course, we establish thresholds of volume, uh, meaning that if they go over a specific threshold, 
it's not that we are going to be paying less. We are going to be paying more because that interpreter is committed with us. He or she should be rewarded. He or she should be rewarded to the point that he or she would be able or more willing to take even more volume. So it would be a win-win situation for Buslingo as well as for the interpreter. So these are the main um, strategies that we use for retention. And now I'm going to be explaining the different opportunities that we are coming across in this industry. One of the things that we encounter when we talk about this industry uh, to other people in other industries is the fact that this industry is not very well known. It, and, and the impact of this industry is huge uh, in terms of human lives, right? Just imagine that you are going to go to get a driver license or a medical treatment and you cannot interact with the medical staff or you cannot interact with the government staff right? You won't be able to, to have that service. You won't be able to receive that service, meaning it's going to be more impactful to your life. And this industry bridges that gap, right? So I think from a marketing standpoint, there is a, a significant opportunity to actually spread the word and spread the knowledge of what this industry is so that the people can see our industry, can have first more knowledge about the industry, second, can see our industry very positively, because in reality, it has a significant impact on human lives. And then um, I think there's a large opportunity within the, uh, the training aspect uh, to level up interpreters qualifications. As I was mentioning on the previous slides, uh, there is an interpreter shortage, uh, meaning interpreters that are really qualified, that pool of interpreters is becoming smaller and smaller every day, right? So by increasing the training and leveling up the training and the complexity of the training, we would be able to train future interpreters that are going to be able to be in our pool resulting on uh, easier recruitment efforts. Uh, because at the end of the day, you train interpreters, you're gonna have more people on the pool. Consequently, your recruitment, it's gonna be facilitated at this point. And then finally, uh, the development of new AI tools uh, to forecast and automate capacity planning resulting on increased language access coverage. Uh, we were discussing about the notifications framework. Um, we are in the process of developing AI tools that actually can help us understand the volume fluctuations and that volatility in the volume that is uh, that is extremely high uh, and very difficult to predict sometimes. And that results on unfulfilled uh, assignments, unfulfilled appointments, and at the end of the day, it affects the language access, right? So by actually automating the capacity planning and being able to forecast through AI tools, uh, we would be able to improve the capacity planning as well the language access coverage. And finally, I'm going to pass it over to Divine, who's going to be explaining a little bit more about the challenges. Thank you. Thank you. So for the challenges, uh, first, the race to the bottom uh, due to extreme competition. Uh, this is in terms of interpreter rates. So to win clients, uh, the client rates are going down, hence the interpreter, uh, interpreter rates are going down as well. So which in relation to the second bullet will be resulting to capacity issues as lower rates will not attract more qualified interpreters. Thank you so much, Divine. So this is all for today. Uh, thank you so much uh, for attending this uh, webinar. My name is Guillermo. Uh, again, uh, we have Divine with us. If you have any questions at any point, please do not hesitate to contact us. Uh, thank you again and have a great day.